So, hello, welcome. Uh, let's start off today. The invitation is to start in a seated position. So feel free to cross your legs, maybe sit up on the heels or any other seated position that works for you. Feel free to prop the hips or you might even sit on a chair if you've got one uh, where you are. Otherwise, taking, taking your time to kind of arrive and adjust into your seat. Wiggle side to side if you need those movements. And then maybe you close down the eyes or just soften the gaze to the floor. And you might like a few rounds of breath, really breathing in, drawing in through your nose. And sighing, release out the mouth. And just a few rounds like that, arriving here in through the nose. And exhale up mouth. And then starting to let your awareness, your attention come to your breath, just as it is connecting into your rhythm, your flow of breath this morning. And then we'll move through our four tapping points to get started today. So if you prefer just to kind of work with your breath and stay as you are, then feel free to do that. Otherwise, the invitation is to come with me. We start up underneath the eyes and just gently tapping on those cheekbones. Then you can always just uh, hold there and pause. Otherwise, we're good with the tapping. Beautiful. Then we'll come to our second point under the collarbones, so adjusting this end of the kidney point on the kidney meridian. We'll tap just underneath the collarbones, you're not actually on the bones here, that little bit that dips underneath. Beautiful. And then hands come to the together, you can come down to the center to that kind of thymus area on the central meridian. So it might just be one hand, and you can always massage or hold, maybe you use both hands here and tap. And then we come out to the side, and the end of the spleen point here. So I've just got the bent arms. You might also like to cross the hands over and just tap from here where you can reach, seeing what feels more comfortable and supportive for you. Beautiful. And then release, let the hands come down, take a moment of pause and notice. And just as and when you're really coming down out of your seat, we'll come down onto the back. So, so making your way there and just drawing the knees in towards the chest as you get there. So let the knees come in and come down and start to take a little bit of movement rolling out through your ankles, your toes, maybe starting to circle through the knees, and just bringing in some awareness and spaciousness through the joint spaces. You might also like to even reach your arms up and kind of roll out through the wrists, opening your hands, opening the feet. And to bring the awareness and attention to these smaller joint spaces that do a lot of the holding in our practice. Right. And then keeping the right knee to the chest, extending your left leg long, up into a spinal twist, taking that right leg over the left side. Maybe you turn your gaze over your right shoulder or keep your 
your head neutral and just pause as you start to bring your breath awareness into the back of the body. And this idea of twisting and rinsing up. And coming through center, and we'll take that left knee in, extending the right leg long, rolling out, and then taking that left leg over for your twist. Maybe you turn your gaze, or gaze stays straight up towards the ceiling. And then coming back to the center. Keep drawing both knees in towards the chest once again. This time you might like to reach the legs up. Feel free to have just a bend in the knees. Or start to add a little bit of a shake out of your legs, maybe your arms as well. Like you're waking everything up. It's kind of like when we're dancing as we stand at this time using the, the shaking and this releasing, you're letting any of that kind of stagnant energy that no longer serves for you, you're releasing it from the body. Might even like a, a breath out through the mouth. A sigh. Beautiful. And then we'll come up towards um, a seat here, but we're going to work with a little bit of uh, rocking and momentum. Now, if this rocking doesn't work in your body, then feel free to roll out to the side and come up. Otherwise, hands under the knees and see if you can catch the little momentum rounding through the back. Again, very optional. If it doesn't work, don't force it. Let's see if you can take a few. And then coming up to a seat, bring your heels down to start with. Hands can come in and behind the knees here. Lift and lengthen up your lower back. And then start to lean back like we're coming into this boat pose. Now option one, just keep your hands as they are. Work with the lean back and lift. And you can still actually get that engagement and draw into the center as you're here. Or maybe you float the feet off the floor. Notice if it all comes into the front of the hips and you might bring the heels down to get that, that sensation or that uh, experience into the lower belly. Maybe you float the arms. Right, so choosing the variation that gives you the most length out of the back and the most connection to your lower belly. And then wherever you are, we'll hold for about three cycles of breath. Beautiful. So if you're not rolling back, if that wasn't now, actually just bring the feet forward, hands to the shins. You're going to pause here for a moment. Otherwise, take your hand in behind your knees and we'll take about three more rocks up and down and try and find that rounding through your back so it's a smooth roll forward the back. Like you're massaging out uh, the back body here. And then after the three, come back. You might start heels to the floor, hands behind, lift and lengthen. Maybe you lean back a little more, maybe you hold here. Maybe you float your feet. Right, finding your variation of this boat pose, think of how you can draw your awareness and connection into the midline of the body. All those lower abdominals, you sort of feel them starting to turn on, right, connecting you to your center. And we'll take maybe three more breaths. Beautiful. And then the option again, if you're not rolling, hands can come up. You can even take the knees out to the side and kind of lean forward if that feels good. Holding here for the breaths, or we'll take three more rounds coming back. See how smooth you can make the movement when you're getting a little more used to it. And then coming up. One more round. Flexing the feet, leaning back, maybe holding here. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're floating the feet. You might even just lift one leg. That's kind of a nice variation as well. You float one leg up, bring it down, put the other leg up. Just notice how it changes your connection through your lower belly. Be curious. Beautiful. And then lift and lengthen. This time, either sweep your feet out to the side, or maybe you can cross the ankles, shift your weight forward, and then walking yourself back towards your tabletop position. Sitting up with the wrists under the shoulders, knees under the hips. 
I'm starting to move through a few rounds of your cat cow as the belly softens to the floor. Arch the back, lengthen across the chest, curl and round, chin towards chest. Belly softens, arch. And round. You're seeking a few rounds. Uh, through the cat cow like this. And then coming into your neutral spine, sending your right leg back, come up onto the right toes, pressing up through that heel. And a moment to just rock forward and back like you're of opening up through the back of the calf on the right side. And then seeing if you can press down through your right toes, press down through the hands, point the toes of your left foot so you start to engage your left leg, and then see if you can just hover your left knee off the floor. Beautiful. Place the left knee down, bring your right knee back into the tabletop, and take it to the other side. So extend your left leg back long, pressing up through that heel. A little bit of movement forward and back. And then ground down through those left toes, press down through your hands. It might just be that you're thinking, like you're engaging and thinking about lifting the right knee if it doesn't come up. Otherwise, point through that right foot, really engage the leg, see if you can press down and then hover that knee off the floor. Pausing here, about two breaths. And then lowering down, knees come back, set yourself back into all, set yourself back onto your heels, roll the shoulders. Maybe you just reach the arms back behind you or feel free to interlace the fingers and open across the chest. And then releasing back, hands come forward, tuck your toes downward facing dog. From your down dog, start to invite the movement in by pedaling through your feet, sinking the heels from side to side, extending those sit bones up towards the ceiling. And we'll pause here for about three to five breaths. Feel free to continue movement or again, coming between your down dog and your child's pose or adding in as much bend as you need. Really explore the pose that works for you. Knowing that you can always come back to child's pose or tabletop and bring some of the intensity, the weight out of your hands, giving yourself that space and freedom. Beautiful. Now the next breath will rise onto the toes, shift forward towards high plank. Now feel free to stay in your high plank on your toes or bring the knees to the floor. Right? Take a moment of breath here. And then we'll lower down to the belly. Bring your big toes together as much as you can and then open your arms out and if you like me in a bit limited on the space. I've got, got to get creative. But try and take the arms out beside you, keeping your hands in line with your shoulders. Now we'll start by turning the gaze to the right side. Come up onto your right fingertips, lift that right elbow towards the ceiling and then begin to roll onto your left shoulder and take that right, maybe that right foot behind you. All right, so you open a little more to that shoulder. If this is all really intense for you, then staying here but bringing your right knee up towards uh, your belly, basically. So you'd be like that. And I'm doing that because I don't have much space behind me to extend the arm, which doesn't make this very comfortable. Although, you can kind of get creative with the uh, direction of the arm, but actually not my palm facing down towards the toes. Beautiful, and then we'll come back through center. Find neutral, extend both arms out once again. Big toes together, touch the legs, start together. Turn your gaze towards the left. Rise onto your left fingertips, elbow up towards the ceiling. Roll onto your right hip. And you might stay here, 
Again, you might bring that top knee down in front of you so it really takes out some of the intensity of the shoulder. Or we take that left leg, those toes behind and opening up. And then just pausing here. And then drawing yourself back. In through center, draw your hands and more towards your baby cobra setup. We're going to set up for locust pose. So floating up like you're coming to baby cobra, you might stay here. We'll extend those arms back now. Float the feet and feel a sense of drawing belly in and towards the center. Lift and activate from here. Two or three more breaths here. And then release down. Maybe a moment just to pause and settle there. And you can either take it back to child's pose and then meeting a down dog, or feel free to bring the hands in underneath, press into the tops of your feet, and we'll lift for upward facing dog. You want a little bit extra. I'm just modifying your practice today for how you're feeling, how far you want to take it. And then coming up and back, downward facing dog. And again, a few grounding breaths here. Noticing the quality of your breath, you might even start to draw in that ujjayi breath as we come into our flowing practice where there's that light restriction to the back of the throat. But seeing if you can keep a connection with your breath throughout the practice. And then we'll rise onto the toes, start to make your way to the top of your mat. Sometimes you might be walking the hands in as well. As you come into your first standing forward fold, feel free to bring elbows to knees. Maybe you come a little further, maybe you've got blocks for your hands to come onto. You might be bending and straightening the legs, adding that little bit of movement here to your forward fold. You might feel relatively open, that feels good, and your legs go more towards straight, but really. Again, modifying for where your body is at right now. Can you approach it with this curiosity and this kind of loving kindness, this patience and attention? Ground down through your feet, even as you can. Start to curl up, think of drawing and connecting to your lower belly as you do so. Maybe your arms reach up as well. And you might even like to continue and come right up onto the toes. And then let everything come down to your Tadasana mountain pose. And adjust as you need to if you're not quite at the top of the mat. As we start to come through a few rounds of our Throne of the Scar A, with a little bit of variation. So, invitation on your breath, you can reach the arms. And then forward fold as you come down. Maybe that's your exhale. It could be inhales, we find halfway lift, hands to shins. Bending the knees to plant your hands, step to your high plank, either on the toes or the knees. And we're going to lower to the belly once again. So feel free again to lower the knees down or to come from your toes, but see how much integrity and connection to your center you can maintain. Either baby cobra or straight into locust pose once again. Activating the back body. As you release, maybe straight to down dog or slide your hands in beside you, press into the tops of the feet. Option to come through your upward facing dog here. Leading in downward facing dog. Now, added option for this variation is we're going to step it down into dolphin pose. And I say that is very much an option. You might come down from your knees, so come into tabletop and then lower the elbows. Or I like to walk the hands in a little closer and then maybe one at a time, or both at the same time, you lower the elbows to the floor. So just if you want to bring dolphin into these sunnies this morning, you can do that. Otherwise, staying in down dog. If you're here, take about three to five rounds of our swimming dolphin. So we're going to shift forward so it's like my face is coming over the thumbs and then back.
Beautiful, and then press down through the hands, maybe one at a time, maybe to your knees. Lifting back up, downward facing dog for a breath. You can always come back into child's pose if you prefer. And then we rise up onto the toes, maybe step or walk, or you might like a little hop. And before you hop, feel free to kind of bend and then straighten the legs. So you get this little bit of bounce, this recoil before you go. And then as you're ready, maybe you hop forward. So all just options if you want that a little bit more in your practice today. Ground down through the feet, let's rise on up. Again, maybe right up onto the toes. And let it all come back down. And just a moment of pause, letting that settle in your body. And so we'll take the same thing again. As you're ready, reaching up. And maybe with your exhale, you fold forward. Hands come up onto the shins for that halfway lift. Bending your knees, place your hands, let's step it back, high plank, either on the toes or on your knees. And we lower down. So finding that connection to your center, slowing it down, let's come all the way down to the belly, releasing the toes. Maybe you lift for baby cobra or we lift up for locust pose again. Either back through child's and down dog, or hands come in and beside you, press to the tops of the feet, upward facing dog, and downward facing dog. Same option again from your down dog, maybe from the knees, maybe walking your hands in, maybe it's one at a time or both. We come down into dolphin pose. Very much an option here. Yeah, if it's not in your practice, feel free to stay in down dog or child's. And if you're with me, we're going for this dolphin. Let's go through again three to five rounds of the swimming dolphin. And then as you're ready, maybe again, the knees come down or lifting one at a time or both at the same time. Downward facing dog for a breath. And then maybe you step or walk or take that little hop. Again, you can kind of bend and straighten the legs, create that sense of bounce and recoil as you do. And then maybe using that for a little hop to the top of your mat. Forward fold. Ground down through the feet. Rise on up. Option right up onto the toes. And lowering it all down. Moment to pause and settle. Again, notice and observe your breath. Just when we start to add a little more of the kind of strength and dynamic nature of the practice. Notice what happens to your breath, making you center and really enjoy the pause and the stillness as well. Beautiful. So we'll take one more round of like this, this variation again. Modify as you'd like to. Might be your inhale that reaches up and your exhale that takes you all the way forward. Halfway lift is the hands, the hands sorry, come onto the shins. Bending your knees, plant the hands. Let's take it back, high plank. Either on the toes or on the knees. Make your way down to your belly. So as you come down, baby cobra or locust pose, lift up. And then engagement right away through the back body as you lift, and that strength and activation. Right, stay here or take it back. We'll bring the hands in, press through the feet, keep that same activation in the back body, upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Pausing here for another round, hands come in, use your knees as you need, lower it down, dolphin pose. Maybe this time with your dolphin, if you have been working with it and those swimming dolphins, you might like to add in a leg lift and then take Maybe one or two swimming dolphins on the side with the leg lifted. 
other side. Again, just adding on these options if you want to take it. You might not take any of these, and that's totally fine. Forward and back. And then when you're really back up, downward facing dog. Again, step, walk, or maybe a hop, and you might take that little bounce with the knees, and then all the way forward. Forward fold, your variation. Ground down through the feet, it's rise on up. Maybe it travels all the way up to your toes. Lift and lengthen, and then floating it down. And arrive in your cause if you'd like. You might even want to add in that little bit of bounce here just to release it out, kind of dropping the shoulders, softening through the knees, add that little bit of bounce. And then slowly bring yourself to stillness, maybe the eyes closed down or a soft gaze. And just notice what there is to notice in your body right now. Beautiful, and sighing down the mouth. And then opening your eyes, they were closed, checking in with your feet. Let's bring it into chair pose with Katasana. The feet might be together or hip distance apart, whatever else you have. You might start with your hands at heart center as you sink your weight back into your heels. I like to lift the toes initially just to feel the weight kind of coming back, sinking down. You can pause here. Maybe you open the arms out to this kind of cactus shape or even reaching them up over here, finding a place just to hold in our Utkatasana chair pose. This side. Taking about two or three more breaths here. And then as you're ready, forward fold. Now, if you like arm balances and they are in your practice, this would be your opportunity to bring your hands down and rise onto your toes, bring those knees in above the elbows and maybe come into Bakasana. Otherwise, we'll just take the halfway lift and then bending the knees to step back. Now, your option is straight to downward facing dog or through your high plank and just through any regular variation of flow that you have. So you might be coming to the belly, you might be lowering halfway, Transitioning to upward facing dog, or you might be in that baby cobra. And then meeting up and back, downward facing dog. And know that you can miss out all of the flow. You can come into child's pose whenever you like. Right leg rises. Bending that knee. Maybe a little movement rolling at the ankle or the, the, the knee here and the hip. Feel free to come through scorpion dog. And then the option for wild things. So it might be that you bring your left knee down and take this you know, supportive variation. I'm going to take my left foot out. The right foot can come over. And then lifting from here. All right, really nice uh, variation, especially on that left shoulder. Otherwise, coming up, opening out, you might roll to the blade edge of that left foot. You'll be even pausing along the way. And then bringing those toes down and opening up. As you're ready, coming back, extend the right leg. We'll step that right foot through, rising up onto the toes just as you need to, pressing out through the back heel, keeping your left hand down, reaching your right arm up, open for our present twist. Turn the gaze down as you sweep the right arm. Reach all the way up for this moment of crescent lunge, pressing out through the back heel. And then we'll transition for warrior two. So lifting up as your back heel comes down, opening up and adjusting your legs here. 
So we will start with a little bit of movement before we kind of pause. So it's that sinking into the bend, the inhale opening up, exhale drawing in. Now your hands might come onto the body, okay? Take that variation, or you might prefer as you come in to actually reach the arms over here. There's a little bit more intensity to it. So choosing the variation for you, you might switch between if you like that idea. But we're gonna start with this movement in and out with your breath. But can you keep the awareness and connection to your feet? As right, so you're grounding down through the feet, look for that squeezing and hugging in towards the inner thighs. And then we'll hold in the next time, coming into your warrior two, and that place of pause, really sinking into your back hip as well, so you're evenly grounding down through both feet. Sending out through the arms. Two or three more breaths here. And then a little reach forward to your front palm, reverse your warrior back. And of course, feel free to straighten the leg a little more if you feel like you need to come out of the bend of that knee, go for it. Otherwise, lengthening up, maybe you sink a little deeper into that knee, depending on what you're after. Taking a few rounds of breath here. And then as you reach for that top hand, we'll all straighten this leg for a moment, extend and lengthen. And then re-bend the front knee, take the right elbow down as we come into this vision of side angle. Opening through your top shoulder, you can keep this hand on the hip to kind of keep that opening through the top rib cage of the chest. You might like to reach the top arm up or alongside the ear. We'll bring that hand, this uh, right hand down to the inside, outside edge of your foot. And just pausing for a few rounds of breath here in our side angle. Nice, full grounded and very strong pose. Beautiful. Inhale, come back up. You can straighten the front leg again. It's like that wide reverse triangle. And then hands come back. Maybe to the hips. I'm going to step in. I personally like a slightly shorter uh, distance in the stance for triangle. I'm going to take a moving variation of triangle as well. So as I'm coming in, I'm going to come down this front leg. The left arm, I want to have it bent and take this kind of shape here. And on the inhale, I'm going to come forward. So I slide down the leg, reach the top arm, and then draw back up. So this front leg, rather than uh, in our warrior, it's more straight. You might have a little bend to support the activation. And then drawing out. And I don't want to extend my back hip too far. I want to find length through both sides of the body. Grounding down through the feet and then drawing back up. Right, so this right hand can kind of slide down the leg, maybe in front or out to the side. Very much dependent uh, on how much space you have in the side body. But working with your breath for a few rounds, grounding down through those feet. You can imagine that you're pressing down through your right heel, so that front heel, and then dragging it kind of underneath the body to get activation through your hamstring. Oh, I seem to have frozen. Not sure if that's happened to you. We'll take two more like that. And then holding for a moment. So come over, you can pause. You might take that arm now straight up 
This uh, right hand can be down the inside line or the outside or just resting on the leg. You don't want too much weight coming through that hand. There's two full breaths. You might even like to reach the right arm long. I actually quite like to reach it long and then bring the left arm back to find more length through that right side. That's also an option. Beautiful. Then inhale, let's take it back. And with your breath, up to windmill the hands, you can lift up onto the back toes, plant them down. Now, if you do work with those handstand hops, sweep your right foot back in a pathway, lean into your hands, and maybe just little hops. So think about how lightly you can land on your right foot here as you press the weight down, lean, and little moments. Feel free if you really like these to just come into your wall and use the wall to play with it. Otherwise, just a few hops. And if you have no interest in that, coming straight back to down dog, maybe throw around a foe. Maybe you want to bring it back to your child's pose or a moment to sit back and pause on the heels. So whatever you're taking, finishing up your round, but it's no rush. And then we'll pause for a moment to allow that to settle. Beautiful. Meeting back in downward facing dog to come into this all on the other side. So this time the left leg will rise and your option to just hold always just come back to down dog. Otherwise bending the knee, maybe you're exploring with the ankle or circling through the knee and the hip. And then if you're coming into wild thing again, it might be that Right knee coming down. I try to take the right foot out to the side. Left toes can come over. You can take this beautiful supported variation. Or feel free to come into your wild thing by rolling to the blade edge of your right foot, coming over. Maybe you hover. And then bring those toes down. You can lift and make them. And then as we come back, Reaching the left leg high, stepping that left foot, any little adjustments it needs if it doesn't quite make it in your body. Pressing up through the back heel, right hand will plant down, left arm reaches as we open into this crescent twist. And then turn the gaze down, start to rise up for crescent lunge. Okay, squeeze and drawing in through the center of the midline. And then as you lift, back heel comes down, open for warrior two, and take those adjustments. So turning the back toes in, sinking into your front knee. Arms can reach, and we're going to work with the movement initially. So it's inhale into the bend, reaching the arms. Exhale, drawing back. It's the invitation to add in that connection of breath. You might also know that your breath, will notice your breath wants to go in the other direction. Totally fine, right? Work with your rhythm. Also that option to reach the arms up or anything else you have for the movement. Just taking a few rounds like this, really sinking forward and look for that beautiful grounded connection through your feet. And as you draw back like that, squeezing in through inner thighs, so you're connecting to the midline as much as you can. And it's that connecting in, bringing the integrity, but not forcing. You're not trying to create gripping, anything like that. It's a very fine line, though. She has this more of strength and dynamic nature to the practice. two or three more before we hold in the pose. Mm 
And then coming in, finding your warrior stance. Maybe turn the gaze and down to the feet. Really activate into that shape and make it nice and strong. <laughs> and squeeze in through inner thighs as you ground down through the feet. And then a little reach forward to your front palm. Reverse the warrior. And feel free to straighten the front leg right away. Otherwise, stay in that bend for a little more. So you lengthen up, press down through both feet. And then we'll take a moment to straighten to that front leg. Obviously, if you want, lengthen. And then re bend, come forward into side angle pose. So elbow can come to the knee. Maybe that right hand comes to the hip or the arm extends up towards the ceiling. You can always bring this left hand down to the inside line or the outside line of the foot. You go a little further or, of course, reach the arm long. And here you're really finding that whole line of energy through that right side of the body, from the blade edge of the foot, foot up through the crown of the head and out to the fingertips. Two or three breaths here. And then inhale, let's come all the way back up. Reverse once again. Beautiful. Hands to the hips, and maybe you step your back foot in a little. If you like to kind of shorten the, the stance for this triangle variation. So the moving triangle again. So the idea is we're kind of coming in and really working with that flossing and lengthening out through the side body. So the right arm this time is going to have that bend. And as I slide down, I'm lengthening through that side body and then drawing back out. So think of lengthening through both sides of the body here. So I'm not trying to pop my hip out as much, but keep this containment drawing in and then lengthen through the side body and reaching back up. Lengthening. And back. And so a few rounds like this, maybe you go a little further into the side bend than me. And feel free to explore that. This is just where it feels kind of good in my body. You know, work in progress this pose. Two or three more before we hold. And as you come in, again, you might be here, you could be pressing in, you might reach that top arm straight up, more of that variation triangle. Or you might like to extend the left arm, bring that right arm down the hip, and then lengthen forward a little more. Really, I'm just doing this one because it's my preference, but choose the one that works more for you. Still, as much as I'm lengthening forward, I want to keep that squeeze in the inner thighs and notice how much the back hip is kind of popping out. Then maintain the integrity through the center. Two more breaths where you are. And how we reach up. Take a moment of that reverse back. Start to move with your hands as you lift to the back toes. Plant the hands option, step it straight back to down dog or child's. Or if you're working with those hops, we step the left foot back halfway, leaning forward, and just little hops, right? Little hops. And then when you're done, feel free down dog, maybe through a round of flow, maybe child's pose. Or again, that option just to come back, sit up on the heels. Wherever you end up after you've been doing with the hops and the flow, Finding a place to pause, to notice, or to really integrate what we've been doing. Wherever you are, about five more breaths.
Beautiful. Alrighty. So we are going to go back into dolphin pose today because it's just that kind of a practice. But if you don't want to do dolphin, then I would recommend doing um, a standing wide-legged forward fold or a seated wide-legged forward fold, if that's what you prefer. Otherwise, coming down, back into our dolphin, and we're going to work towards a variation of dolphin strut. So great for just working with the, the balance if you are kind of in that direction of forearm stand. So as you check in with your elbows, you do want them under your shoulders and even slightly narrow because they tend to want to roll away from each other. And we tap the toes and lift on up. So if everything's quite tight in your body, then being here and just working with lifting the leg is kind of where you want to start. So wherever that is, you can flex or point, but activate the leg. Take a few breaths on either side and start with these leg lifts. Okay. If that feels good, and especially if your feet can kind of nearly come to the floor, it just adds to the surface area, I turn my heel in a little bit. You might take your right hand towards your right leg, whether that's ankle, calf, or if you can reach. And then you pause here. Now, if this feels really balanced, you might start to lift your left leg up. And just pausing there is pretty challenging. If that feels really balanced, you might bend that left leg, take your right hand back, and even search for the foot. Right, and then release down. But working with those stages, so the first thing I'm taking, right hand to right ankle, pause, find the ground. Then maybe lift that left leg, so the opposite leg lifts up, pause, then maybe work with the bind. And then you would do it on the other side. So it's, make sure it's the right hand to right ankle, left hand to left ankle. You're not crossing the midline. If dolphin is a big restriction for you, you can kind of play with this dance from downward facing dog if you prefer. So if I'm reaching my left leg up, now it's not so much scorpion dog. I don't want to open my hips too much. My hips are actually squared to the floor a little more. And then you can rise up onto the fingertips and maybe come back. You might just play with the balance here or searching for your foot once again. Just if you feel like you want to play with this balance, but dolphin is definitely not the place for you. Totally get it. We all have very different shoulder and arm lengths and things like that. So feel free to take that on both sides. We'll be here mm, have about another minute. Finishing off, otherwise in your wide-legged forward fold, you might add any other kind of movement from there. If you're in dolphin, again, remember the other side. So it would be uh, left ankle, sorry, left hand to left ankle. This might be it. You want to pause. Maybe you're just hovering the foot. It doesn't have to come up super high. Okay. This here is a pretty, pretty big deal. It's really quite challenging to balance. And then if that's stable, you bend the knee. Might just be hovering the hand. Maybe you come back. Maybe you can find the foot. Yeah. Once you've done all of that, feel free, whatever you were doing, to rest in child's pose. More up and back on the heels. And then just letting it go, right? The essence of some of the kind of principles in, in yoga is this idea of parigraha, or it kind of translates to non possessiveness, or letting go. This idea of being able to fully be present and engaged in our lives and our experiences, but in the next moment, let go of it. You know, we're not holding on and dwelling on the stories or judging what we can and can't do, whether it's positive or, you know, perceivably positive or negative. So it's a great time in things like this with these kind of tricky balance moves to just <sighs> let it go. Cool. Alrighty. So we are going to come back into down dog. And if you have blocks or anything that represent blocks, you might like them just for our half split kind of variation here. You also might like your support for under your knee if you know that the floor is relatively hard and you want a little bit of support, you're bringing that in. And then we'll meet in down dog. Reaching the right leg high. And anything you need here to step that right foot in between the hands and bring your back knee down. This is where you might like the blocks, but you can always do it on fingertips or books or anything else that you've got. And we're going to sink forward. So sinking into your hips. 
and then drawing back right towards maybe a straight leg but if your leg doesn't go all the way to straight then keep a bend totally fine that little movement of kind of flossing out releasing the end of the practice and just a few like that but again you can have your fingertips on the floor maybe don't take as much of the movement Beautiful, and then we'll come back for a moment and pause with the straight leg variation, which might be that you have a bend, right? Can't you see in the um, in the knee? We'll take it a little more towards straight. Feel free to use the blocks or fingertips to the floor, but try and connect to the length out through your lower back. So lengthening, and then maybe this fold. And to get the length, you might stay up a lot higher and still have that sensation of squeezing in and working into the back of the leg, which might actually be more into the back of the calf or anywhere else you notice it. And that sense of folding forward. And change the setting of the blocks. And just two or three more rounds of breath here. And then bending through that front knee. If you're using blocks or otherwise your hands, bring them to the inside line of your foot. Co-heel your right foot out towards the right. We're heading for lizard lunge. And feel free to adjust that back knee so you come on top. You might not be down this low, right? You might keep the shape up a lot higher, depending on how your hips are feeling today. And the option is to use the blocks to maybe come down onto the elbows or just staying up on your hands. Or maybe your elbows come down towards the mat. Yeah, thinking that variation, anything else you have. And just a few breaths here in Lizard Lunge, working with those outer hips here. And then lifting up from there, take the box out to the side, and just making your way back towards downward facing dog. And then feel free to pedal out through the feet, or you're welcome to take that through um, a round of your flow. If you'd like to kind of rinse it out between sides, feel free to do that. And then just when you're ready, left leg will rise, bring that left foot through. Oops, just let's see if I can get it there. Rising up onto the blocks here if you're using them. And we start with that kind of flossing. So we're going to sink in to the bend of the knee and then draw back more to that half split. So adjusting when your shape is, it looks really different for all of us depending on the leg length, the torso length, the length in the hamstrings, uh, the tightness around the hips. So making it yours, thinking of just this movement forward and back where you can create spaciousness and freedom through the body a little more. It's quite like props to get that extra height to be able to move here and flow, but you can always do it with hands on the ground. Or even hands up on the hips and take it a little bit slower, but more balanced focused. And then we'll draw back. For that half split variation, again, maybe the leg is bent a little bit more if it's quite tight to keep the leg from the lower back. Maybe it's straight, adjust the box or whatever you're using. And then we pause here, look, to, look, that, uh, look for that activity and maybe that squeezing into your inner thighs. Two or three more breaths here, noticing the length out of the lower back. Let it be an invitation to come forward so there is a tilt where you create space. And 
and then we'll bend that front knee. The blocks or hands can come to the inside line now as we make our way forward into lizard lunge, adjusting your back knee, so coming onto the top, foot can come out. Maybe your hands are down or you can come to the blocks and your elbows or maybe to the floor. I'm just finding that lizard lunge. Few rounds of breath here. And then gently your next breath, easing your way back up, making your way back. You can slide those props out to the side. And feel free to come back towards downward facing dog. Maybe you want to rinse it out through a final round of your flow. Maybe you want to come straight back to child's pose. Right, and pause from there for a moment. Just noticing the breath, keeping that connection, that flow on what you're doing, even in the moments of pause and kind of rest, you're not falling out of the practice. And then we'll make our way over and onto the back. And all the way down. Whew. Bring your knees in for a moment, a little rock side to side like we started with. Maybe just noticing any of the difference in your body and your breath from when you started this practice today. You can let the feet come down, bring them out wide. And just taking the knees gently side to side. Now, if your body feels like it wants to kind of lift up into a bridge pose or even wheel pose to seal this practice, feel free to take that now in your own time. But really honoring how your body feels. I'm sort of out of time to do that, but you might want to add it on in your practice. Otherwise, before Shavasana, I'll just reach the legs up and you can always pop up your hips if you prefer the small waterfall variation. Otherwise, like we started with arms and legs up, just give everything a shake out again. Let it release, let it shake it out. Take everything out, letting it go as you come into your day. It's kind of refreshed, rejuvenated space in your body. And then make your way into Shavasana, which might be coming straight out onto your back. You might prop up your knees or your hands resting on the body. You might prefer to lie on your side or your belly. Or coming into a seated position. Just finding what feels right for your Shavasana today. And then as you settle, letting go of any of that, maybe conscious control of your breath. And just allowing the breath to find its natural flow once again. And using that wherever you are to sort of feel the parts of your body that are in connection with the floor. And feeling the weight of your body resting into the floor. Shavasana.
And then if you have more time, feel free to stay as you are, take a longer Shavasana. If you're with me at the hour, then starting to deepen the breath, invite those little movements back into your body. Lengthening through your arms and legs. Maybe you roll to one side or come to a seat or just seal off your practice exactly where you are. And we'll close with a round of breath together if you'd like to join me. Breathing in through the nose, filling up. And exhale, sighing it out the mouth. Thank you all for practicing, whether it was live today or on the recording. And namaste.